Should you become a diagnostic medical sonographer in 2022? The purpose of this video is to figure out whether this particular occupation is for you. We're going to go over salaries, demand, educational requirements, demographics, illness rates, and more. Diagnostic medical sonographers operate special imaging equipment to create images and conduct tests. These images and test results help physicians and healthcare practitioners assess and diagnose medical conditions. Diagnostic medical sonographers prepare patients for procedures. They prepare and maintain the diagnostic imaging equipment. They operate that equipment to obtain images and conduct tests, and they review those images or test results to check for quality and adequate coverage. To really excel as a diagnostic medical sonographer, you need to practice active listening. You need to have pretty good reading comprehension and social perceptiveness. Just like many of the other healthcare occupations, many people that are employed as medical sonographers enjoy their jobs and get meaning out of their particular roles. According to the Payscale Meaning Survey, 76% of surveyed medical sonographers report extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their job and 83% believe that their work makes the world a better place. And many of the other healthcare occupations kind of report the same thing. Medical sonographers tend to report higher meaning and job satisfaction than registered nurses and surgical techs, but people that are employed as radiation therapists tend to report higher meaning and higher job satisfaction than medical sonographers. Job satisfaction and meaning are two components of choosing a career. If you need help choosing a particular career, we have the course for you. Choose the Right Career is a seven-step process for finding the ideal career for you. You're going to spend about a third of your entire life working in a certain occupation. You want to make sure you make the right choice. Check out the link below for more details. So what kind of people become diagnostic medical sonographers? We can look at demographics. We can look at the personalities of uh, diagnostic medical sonographers and more. When we look at the demographics of the entire United States, about 51% of the population is female, about 19% is Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 14% African American, and 6% Asian American. Meanwhile, when we look at the demographics of medical sonographers, as you can see, it is very female dominated. About 86% of diagnostic medical sonographers are female. 7% self-report as Hispanic Latino, 84% Caucasian, 3% African American, and 9% Asian. We can also look at the Myers-Briggs personality types of diagnostic medical sonographers and really kind of drill down what kind of people actually join this particular occupation. According to the Myers-Briggs company, the ISTJ is the most commonly found MBTI type, followed by the ESTJ and then the ESFJ. Meanwhile, the most likely Myers-Briggs types to become a medical sonographer include the ENFJ, the INFJ, and the ESTJ. Before we get into the educational requirements for medical sonographers, we can actually look at the injury and illness rate. This is kind of a con that not a lot of people talk about in the healthcare industry, but with healthcare careers, the injury and illness rate is much higher than, say, you know, certain occupations where you can work from home, such as being a software developer or graphic designer. The latest stats we have are from 2020, and there was about 1,500 injury and illnesses that occurred as a result of going to work. 720 of those were illness-related. There was 220 fall slips and trips, and there was actually 20 assaults in 2020. And this is very common among healthcare occupations. They just tend to have a higher injury, illness, and even sometimes fatality rate than other occupations because you're dealing with patients and you're dealing sometimes with very sick people. So colleges and universities offer both associate's degree or two-year programs to get into and become a diagnostic medical sonographer. And they also offer bachelor's degree programs to also allow you to get into this particular occupation. So the question is, does getting that bachelor's degree make you more competitive than getting that associate's degree? One thing we can look at is kind of the workforce right now. How many people working in this particular occupation have a bachelor's degree and how many people have an associate's degree? So this is the latest stats from 2021, they surveyed diagnostic medical sonographers and they found that about 36% of employed have an associate's degree, 36% have a bachelor's degree, 7% a master's degree, and 21% have other. So it's kind of evenly split between associates and bachelor's degrees. So you might not need to get that bachelor's degree in order to really enter this particular occupation. And also keep in mind, the vast majority of sonographers are all going to the same place. About 76% of diagnostic medical sonographers are employed by hospitals. The vast majority of 
people entering this particular occupation will be working in a hospital. Only 11% work in physician offices. Next up, we can look at the wages of diagnostic medical sonographers, and we can look at the wages over time. In 2021, the average base salary for a medical sonographer was $80,680. This was more than the average base salary for a licensed nurse. This was more than the average base salary of a surgical tech. It was a little less than registered nurses, radiation therapists, and nuclear medicine techs. Keep in mind, these are base salaries. This is before any kind of overtime. And diagnostic medical sonographers aren't like, say, teachers or restaurant managers where they're not paid for overtime. Well, they should be paid for overtime. Most states have laws regarding, they have overtime laws, especially in the state of California. We can also look at their wages over time. In 2016, the average base salary for a diagnostic medical sonographer was $71,750. This grew to $80,680 in 2021. This gives us an almost $3,000 wage growth between 2020 and 2021, or about a 3.6% raise between 2020 and 2021. So definitely not bad pay. And there's actually certain parts of the country that pay way more than the average base salary, which is nationwide. For example, in San Jose, California, the average base salary is around $138,000 per year. And also keep in mind that California has different overtime laws than the other states. A lot of people, a lot of healthcare workers in California work a ton of overtime and get double time. So it's not uncommon for registered nurses and other people within the healthcare industry to earn more than $200,000 in a year because of a really high base salary and then time and a half overtime and double time overtime as well. And it's not just San Jose, California. Cities all over California, not just in Northern California, but Southern California, tend to pay diagnostic medical sonographers more than the average. Definitely not bad for an occupation that just requires an associate's degree. Next, let's talk about the jobs market. What is the demand like right now for diagnostic medical sonographers? If you went and got an associate's degree or you went and got a bachelor's degree, could you work in the places that you want to work? In 2021, there were 78,640 employed diagnostic medical sonographers in the entire United States. This is much less than the number of employed registered nurses and licensed nurses, but it's more than the number of employed radiation therapists and nuclear medicine techs. One of the big advantages of becoming, say, a registered nurse is that there's such demand and there's just so many of them that you can really live in any metro area, any small town, there's most likely a hospital nearby where you can find employment. I show you the sizes of the workforces because it really shows you that with something like registered nurses or licensed nurses, they really can work anywhere in the United States. There's going to be demand for them. And that's kind of an advantage they have over, say, this particular occupation, medical sonography. But 80,000 is still pretty good. It's just the scale of registered nurses is so big. So that's the size of the workforce, but we can also look at the government outlook for diagnostic medical sonographers. It's actually about 10%. So the government is actually pretty bullish on the next 10 years for medical sonographers, more bullish than many of these other healthcare occupations. Another thing we can look at, and this is my favorite thing to look at, is job postings. How many job postings are there right now for diagnostic medical sonographers? And how much demand is there right now? So I typically use three different job platforms, Glassdoor, Indeed, and LinkedIn. And I look at the number of job postings for a given occupation. On Glassdoor.com, I found a little over 6,000 job postings. Indeed, around 20,000 job postings. LinkedIn, around 13,000. And then we can compare it against the number of employed. And it looks pretty good. There's plenty of job postings compared to the workforce size. So there are plenty of job postings for people in this particular occupation. And the number of employed has been rising over time. In 2016, there was 65,790 employed diagnostic medical sonographers. This grew to 78,640 in 2021. And this gives us a gain of around 13,000 employed between 2016 and 2021. So no matter what you look at, whether you're looking at job postings, whether you're looking at government projections, whether you're looking at the number of employed over time, it does look pretty good for this particular occupation. It has pretty good wage growth. It has pretty good job growth. And it only really requires an associate's degree. And on top of that, you can work overtime to boost your pay even more. Are you a diagnostic medical sonographer? Let us know down in the comments below what you enjoy about this occupation and what you dislike about this occupation. Thanks so much for watching. And also, if you need help choosing a career, check out the link down below. Thanks, and I will see you in the next video.